Welcome to Fargo FX. It has been a little while since we did an anvil top review. I recently purchased a couple of Mora knives. Now, probably just about all of you have seen a Mora of some description or other before. And uh, probably maybe one of the most reviewed, if not the most reviewed, at least of the, uh, you know, the mass produced knives. Uh, these, of course, come from Sweden. And uh, I've kind of been curious about them for a while, so I finally got my hands on a couple. And uh, I kind of had a plan that I was going to review them in a certain way and maybe discuss their attributes from the perspective of a knife maker. Uh, you know, I'm pretty new to knife making, but I know what I like and I know what seems to work. Uh, and I know a little bit about what makes a good quality knife and, and what makes maybe a cheaper knife. So I thought about exploring some of those ideas. Uh, but then I realized, you know, really the Mora review has pretty much been done to death. And I think what I'll do instead, um, maybe I'll talk about them here for just a minute, the difference between these two models at least. And, uh, and then we're going to do something a little different. Uh, this one here, which was the slightly cheaper, not a lot, but slightly cheaper. This was about $13. Has a little bit thinner, uh, actually pretty substantially thinner blade to it. Um, and I think with this one, I'm actually going to dissect the handle. Now, I already have some idea what the handle looks like inside. Um, I, if I understand correctly, these are not full tang, but they're like, you know, three-quarter tang or something. So probably there's a tang on this knife that comes down somewhere into this kind of region in here. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how they're secured, if they're just molded in place. I know that the knife handle itself, it's, um, it's a harder plastic and then it's over molded with a, uh, I don't know if it's rubber. I would guess it's, it's rubber, um, but probably a fairly thin layer of it because it's not real flexible, but it's grippy. Uh, which makes for a good, you know, really nice grip, and that's one of the nice things about the Mora. And then, of course, the uh, the famous Scandi grind on the Mora, which I think they do a really good job of. But like I said, we're, we're actually going to get into this uh, handle. We're going to cut it apart. I'm going to sacrifice a $13 knife. Uh, we're going to cut it apart and take a look at how it's put together. And then maybe on a future project, I will rehandle this Mora, because I think that would be... So I'll, I'll try to do it without damaging the blade. And then the other thing I will mention is just that uh, this knife, which happens to be, I think they call it the Robust Trade Knife. Uh, this model is, uh, it's a carbon steel blade where the other one was stainless. And uh, this is, I got it thinking that this would be more along the lines of a bushcraft type knife. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, uh, but as it turns out, the spine of the knife has it kind of has an unfinished look to it. Now, my understanding is Mora doesn't regard this as an unfinished spine. It's just a little bit different. Um, you know, it's a different kind of spine. But you can see there that, um, you know, it's not polished or, or cleaned up very well. And uh, it does not have that nice, sharp right angle edge. So if I was going to use this for bushcraft purposes, um, although it has a good thick blade and it is carbon steel, uh, which is nice, it, it would have to be modified in that way. And of course, that's a pretty simple thing uh, to do if you have any kind of even basic tools. Uh, you can put your own right angle edge on there. So that, that might be something I do in the future. Uh, but this knife I like, I like it a lot. I think the grip is probably identical to, uh, to the other one, uh, but it, it has a little bit better feel, a little bit more confident feel, uh, to my hand anyway, uh, because it's got a, you can feel that it has a little bit more weight to it. And honestly, this knife right here, uh, because of that, that it's a, a thinner blade, uh, this one would be a much better choice if you were really, really weight conscious uh, as you were packing to go on maybe a long backpacking excursion or something like that. Um, this knife, it's, it feels like it's almost going to float out of your hand. I mean, it's just a very, very light knife. Uh, and yet, it is still, a, a it, from all appearances, it's a very high quality. Um, the construction is very high quality. The fit and finish are good. The grinding on the blade is decent. And it's a very, that's one thing to keep in mind if you do buy a Mora, uh, it is a very, very sharp edge. So with that, we're going to get right into this handle. Uh, one last comment just about the sheaths. Uh, I think the sheath is probably most people's least favorite part about the Mora type knives. Um, of course, there are a lot of different models and there are a few different kinds of sheaths. Uh, but generally, the low end sheaths are, I, I mean, I think they're well made. Um, and they, you know, the, the 
knife isn't going to fall out of there, but it it just it never really feels like you have a secure firm lockup, at least with the two examples that I've handled here. So I don't know. Like I said, I think it's pretty secure. I don't think it's falling out of there, um, but it it just it doesn't completely instill confidence. So enough about the sheath. I am going to wrap up the blade to protect it, and uh, then we're going to cut right into this handle. We're going to see how that goes. As you can see, that is definitely not a full tang knife. Wow, not even close. Right there, the tang has appeared. So that actually does go pretty deep. Let me get this out of here so we can take a look at that. It actually does go pretty deep into the handle. So my guess is you could use this knife for many, many years and that thing would probably never loosen up. So we're gonna get that the rest of the way out of there. But first, I want to, um, I want to examine the construction here. This is kind of interesting. On the outside is the rubberized part, and then the inside, of course, is that hard plastic. And it might actually be built, it might be manufactured in a couple of different layers of hard plastic, too. But you can see what they mean when they say over-molded rubber, because uh, this rubberized finish is actually a fairly thin layer on the outside of that hard plastic. Uh, but it is enough to give you a pretty good grip might expect more from a $50 or $100 knife, uh, but that's not what this is. So, all right, so I'm gonna take the rest of this off of here. I'm gonna try to do it without doing significant damage to the tang. I would like to, uh, in a future video, put a new handle on this. Now, for those who don't know, uh, there are ways to just get a Mora steel knife blank. So if you're interested in putting your own handle on a Mora, you don't have to buy one like this and then cut it apart. Uh, but I happen to have one and I thought it'd be interesting to see what the inside looked like. So that's interesting. You can see they have, uh, they've, they have some different contours and shapes in that tang that will uh, undoubtedly add security once it's molded into the handle. It would be, you know, pretty much impossible for that to loosen up. So there you have the inside of a Mora. Under any kind of normal conditions, I don't think this blade would ever work its way loose from this handle. This is a very good quality, tough, strong plastic. And uh, you know, based on the shape of the tang, it would be pretty much impossible uh, to work that thing loose unless you were, unless that was your number one goal and you spent weeks working at it. Or you know, if you had some power tools. So to answer the question, that is what's inside Amora. Well, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I would expect to see this knife appear in a future video probably fairly soon uh, when I rehandle it. And uh, for those of you that are waiting for subscriber builds, what are we up to, 12, I think? Uh, that should be out a little bit later in the week. 
And if you're interested in buying a Mora, I will have a couple of links. I'm going to try to find links to both of the knives that I got in the description below. And that'll be through my Amazon affiliate. Uh, so that is a way if you're interested to support the channel. And with that, I'll just say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you in the next video.